black clothes. Slimming. Elegant. Goth. Really good for ninjas. But did medieval people make black clothes? Take a look at this manuscript. This is a 10th century Anglo-Saxon calendar showing farm labourers wearing black shoes. Here's another one. This manuscript shows a king, possibly Alfred the Great, with his witan, his high council. They're all wearing lovely black booties as well. So black shoes seem to be something popular, worn by Anglo-Saxons in the 10th century, so in the 900s. In fact, we've got lots of black stuff in manuscripts from all the way through the medieval period, made using iron gall ink, which is a mixture of oak galls and iron salts mixed in water. And I'm going to make an in-depth video on the process of making iron gall ink, because I have just made some, but for now you should go over to Sunday Scriptorium's channel, because her calligraphy and her ink are gorgeous, and she plays the accordion, and sometimes she sells the ink, so what more could you possibly want? Um, highly recommend. But we have plentiful evidence from manuscripts and from occasional finds here and there that medieval people wore black clothes. STOP! What? You have declared that black clothing in Vikings and the Last Kingdom and Assassin's Creed was incorrect historically. You are a liar and a hypocrite and a shagger and a fiend. No. N no? No. Explain. A wheel. See, my problem with medieval black clothes isn't that people are wearing black in medieval programs. My problem with medieval clothes when they're black on TV shows is usually their fantasy. The other problem is early medieval black is way different to late medieval and early modern black. Let me try and explain what I mean. But first of all, I am indebted to Isabel Northwood of Isabel Northwood Costumes for her help researching this topic, especially with regards to the later medieval period. It's not really my area of expertise. Also, before I forget, shout out to Dawn Oldham for her really kind coffee donation. Thank you so much, Dawn. Your support is amazing, and it has been for months and months and months. You rock. I really appreciate it. You are incredibly generous. So thank you very much indeed once again. So, early medieval black clothes. Most of what we see of black in the early medieval period is these shoes, these boots, that we see in manuscripts made with iron gall ink. And this stuff writes jet black. Even on modern paper, and especially on medieval vellum, you can get a brilliant, rich, dark black colour. It's not light fast, but because it's trapped between the pages of a book, it survives pretty well. This stuff that we make this ink from, this iron sulphate, basically reacts with the tannins in these oak galls to make this rich jet black colour. But can it be used to dye cloth? Well, yeah, it can. Really, really well, in fact, be used to dye cloth. It's fantastic as a dye stuff. I've been playing with this stuff for the last fortnight, trying to figure out if I can make black I felt like a medieval alchemist trying to make gold from lead. And one of the ingredients of this, the iron sulphate, was actually an ingredient that alchemists used to try and turn lead into gold later in the medieval period. So I've literally been doing medieval alchemy. It's amazing. But what I have found, and this is something that's been echoed in loads of places, uh, a chap called Guthrie has a blog called Distillatio, which I will link to in the description, where he tries to dye black using these oak galls, using this iron gall technique. And the ingredients for it are known right the way back to the Assyrians in Ashurbanipal II's reign in 600 and something BC. So the ingredients are there. But it doesn't make black. It doesn't make, like, black black. It makes... Take a look. This is what I've got. This I'll, I'll put a little sample... Take a look at what I've got. This is the stuff that I have been working on, which Editing Jimmy should hopefully have nicely spliced in. So as you can see, the background here is the white wool that I made my teeny tiny tunics out of. 
It's just an old wool blanket. It's potentially been bleached white at some point whilst they were producing it. I don't know how it was treated. Um, I've given it a damn good scrubbing. I've also got some loom state wool here, which I have uh, checked. It has not been washed or treated uh, beyond having a bit of a rinse of water. I've also got some linen here, which is loom state, so that's as it came off the loom. I've also got some other stuff, and we'll talk about that in a second. But as you can see, I got greys. These greys are without the iron sulfate. That's just the tannin from the oak galls. Okay? Underneath that, you've got the iron sulfate mixed with oak gall solution. And we've got a half hour dye bath, a one hour dye bath, a seven hour dye bath, and then three or four, four separate dips for at least an hour over three days. And none of it has gone black. It's all gone grey. Now, if I had some really dark wool from a black sheep, which obviously isn't black, it's dark brown. If you ever looked at sheep wool from a sheep wool, if you've ever looked at wool from a black sheep, it's actually brown. But if I were to dye that with this, I reckon it would go super, super dark. On the other side of this sample sheet, we've got the leathers. So Guthrie's results on his blog call the colour that he achieved from this black enough. And that's what I've got here. It is a blue-black. It's not pure black. And uh, Editing Jimmy put a sample, of a, a comparison between a modern black synthetic leather and my leather. So if you oil it, it goes a little darker, but that oil doesn't last long. It, it seeps into the leather, it feeds it, it dissipates, and then it goes to this sort of faded blue-brown, blue-black-brown colour. So, we need to unpack this because this is getting a bit in-depth. This recipe is known for ink in the 12th century. So in the 1100s, this recipe is known for ink, using specifically iron sulfate, iron 2 sulfate, vitriol it's called in medieval texts, green vitriol. The leather dye that I'm using is exactly the same as the ink recipe. And that is from the 16th century, that's from I think the 1550s, like 1558 or something like that, from a German recipe I believe. So if anyone out there can source me an earlier black leather dye recipe from a medieval source, throw it at me in the community tab. We've got a reading list there for sources of stuff like this, so if you've got a source like that, please throw it at me. What this tells me, apart from the fact that this iron 2 sulfate was not industrially produced in Britain before the post-medieval period, which I already knew, what this tells me is that you can make black leather, but that it will not look like a biker jacket. Get on with it. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to give them the background. So impatient. Nice eyeliner. I reckon that I've achieved early medieval black. By the high late medieval periods, especially by the 14th century and the 15th century, you see things like heraldry appearing, Burgundy becomes a big power in Western Europe. Their influence on fashion includes things like black becoming a really formal colour in court, so in royal courts. So at that point, black starts to become a fashionable colour. Prior to that, black's not really a fashionable colour. Things like blue from indigo, red, yellows, purple, these are all rich colours. Green is a rich colour because it involves over dyeing, so dyeing yellow and then dyeing blue, or vice versa. And if you want to get a better, richer black, you can dye using indigo and then over dye it with a cochineal red. So that's the red that the Queen's Guards tunics are made of, that kind of red. Or kermes. If you do that with a load of alum as a mordant, you will get black. The problem is that before 1200, alum wasn't really being imported into Europe that much. It is from Yemen and Egypt and Chad, I think, is the, is the biggest source of uh, alum, potassium alum. So, early medieval, but early medieval black, when you look at it in manuscripts, you see these monks, they're almost always wearing either grey or brown, or they're just not coloured. Their clothes aren't coloured in. 
That's probably partly because the actual rule of St. Benedict, so these Benedictine monks, are following a rule that says, don't worry about the shade of the wool that you make your clothes from, make your habit from the cheapest wool available, which is going to be undyed black sheep wool, because black sheep wool is more difficult to dye pretty colours. White wool takes colours easier. Brown wool, black sheep wool, much more difficult. So, the black friars, the black clothing that these monks are wearing is black because it's from black sheep, but black sheep aren't black, they're brown. If you want to donate yards and yards and yards of richly dyed oak, gall, alum, mordanted wool to your local monastery, then I'm sure they'd accept it, but black in the early medieval period is not light fast. Black in the early medieval period is expensive to make, reliably. In fact, it's virtually impossible to achieve. But black in the later medieval period is doable, it's fashionable, but it is still expensive. So if you are a nobleman and you have the money to have your yards and yards of cloth over dyed, so dyed red, dyed black, dyed blue, then red, then yellow, and then mordanted with alum to get rid of the blue to make it black, go ahead. You probably would. But you're not a nobleman from Burgundy. You're one of the 99% of people in the medieval world who is struggling in their hovel. So get back to the harvest, because the noblemen need to eat. Pathetic churl that you are. So we've got this 16th century black dye, and it makes a wonderful blue-black colour. It does fade in the light. We've got this dark grey, and if we were to over-dye madder and woad and weld with a load of alum, then yes, we could get black. But we don't know if anyone did that in the early medieval period. We certainly don't really have any evidence of that being done. If anyone can cite me a source, throw it in the community tab. In fact, if you have achieved a better black than this, especially on the linen, using this recipe, please do let us know in, once again, the tab or tag me in your Instagram post, if you're natural dyer, please, please, please do let us know, because I would absolutely love to be able to achieve proper black black, but from the evidence available and from a lot of other people's experiments, it doesn't really seem to be a thing. All of which brings me back to you. Because I do get grumpy at people wearing black in TV shows that are set in the Viking period. And I know why they do it. They do it to make it look grim, and they do it to make it look dark, and they do it to make it look moody, to go with their nice black war paint. Sorry, makeup. Sorry, eyeliner. Whatever the hell it is. But black wasn't a fashionable colour, and it certainly wasn't the colour of the poor, the dark, the grim, the miserable. Les Miserables in the early medieval period were probably wearing uh, undyed brown clothes. And even then, dyeing clothes was incredibly common. Like, we've got huge numbers of finds of dyed cloth, dyed with nuts, and dyed with various plant dyes, like madder and weld. Especially weld, it's very, very common. So, that is problem one that I have with these TV shows, is they're trying to make people look, well, too grim. The other problem I have is that they're wearing synthetically dyed, industrially produced, modern black, which is black. You just saw. You know, if you've ever seen a bike jacket, hell, if you've ever seen a pair of black jeans, you'll know that they're black. But just like a pair of black jeans always fades to grey, medieval blacks always faded. So, do I expect these shows to suddenly start making all of their black clothes using this natural dyeing process that I've just made in my back kitchen for, like, two pounds? No. Why on earth would I expect that from multi-million pound budget TV and films? What I expect is people to come up to me at reenactments and say, did they really dress like they dress in the Vikings? Did they really dress like they do in The Last Kingdom? Did they really dress like they do in the Tudors? And for me to have to say... No, that's just TV in Hollywood. And as a living historian and reenactor, it is a problem because it does seep into the public consciousness. People see these things and go, 
oh, that's a Viking. And it's just a bit of a bummer to people like me, and I know a lot of you guys who put loads and loads of effort into making their clothes look accurate, as accurate as possible. And if you look at the medieval dye stuffs that were available, they make incredible colours. They make a huge range of colours. Reds and pinks and purples and oranges and greens and yellows and chocolate and brown and peach and puce and it's a weird film. But they all fade. They fade in the light. They fade in the rain. If you wash them, they fade. And the short answer to all of this, the TLDR is, could medieval people make black clothes? Yes. After 1100... Absolutely. And they were doing it more and more and more, as it became more popular in court after the 14th century. In the 15th century, black is a popular court colour, and it has specific uses in court. You use it for mourning by the 16th and 17th century, you use it in your portraits in the 17th century, it is your formal black clothing. Your blacks are your formal wear for religious ceremonies for funerals, which is why black, by the Victorian period, becomes kind of the formal colour. The mourning colour is a late medieval idea, okay? In the early medieval period, and that is my main period that I reenact, so prior to, in Britain, the Norman conquest of England in 1066, uh, Wales and Scotland were not conquered in 1066, haha. <laughs> Could they dye their clothes black? Kind of. They could get really dark clothes. They could get a brownie black by using iron gall over dark wool. You could over dye with madder and indigo, and you get a kind of bluey black colour. Again, if you use the iron gall and then over dye with those colours and you've had different results, please do tell me. But could they get black? Black. No. Jet black clothing. I don't think was a thing in the Viking Age. I really don't. I wish it were. I wear black all the time. I mean, my standard uniform day to day is a black heavy metal band t-shirt, black jeans, black boots, a black jumper, and a black hat. So I would, I would love if the Vikings were the gothest creatures on earth, but they just weren't. They loved blue. Blue was blue and purple were their colours, their fashion colours. So there you have it. Thank you guys so much for indeed for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I really hope this was interesting to you. Again, please do share your experiments with natural dyeing. I love natural dye. Uh, I have never had so much fun experimenting with dye stuffs as I have trying to get this black. It's been really, really interesting. And now I've got bottles of ink in my kitchen. <laughs> I need to buy some vellum. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if any of you guys are interested in supporting my channel then please do like the video and subscribe to the channel i've got so many wonderful subscribers now there's nearly three thousand of you and it's incredible to have you guys here enjoying my video so thank you ever so much uh, i have a coffee account if you would like to uh, support the channel in a tiny way financially it helps to buy things like the iron sulfate and uh, the fabric that i'm using for these dye experiments and i need a couple of new light bulbs for my lighting rig uh, so feel free. Uh, so that's there if you are interested. So thank you once again ever so much. I hope I see you all again next week. Uh, we are going to be talking about lots and lots of different things as lockdown continues and I have some interesting guests hopefully who will be joining me. Oh and uh, next week if you go over to Agnes Edgren's channel which I will link to uh, you will see us chatting about our time playing in the SCA. So if you're interested in that, go and have a look at Agnes's channel. She's amazing. She is a wonderful Swedish reenactor who has lovely cats and is just brilliant. So thanks very much for watching. Who will I draw? Bye for now. You probably should give him a couple of quid if you could afford it. I mean, he's doing quite a lot of research for these videos, and some people can be really nasty in the comments. <laughs>